goes back to the very early history of Islam when uh, after the Prophet's death, uh, there, there was a recognition that there had to be somebody who would rule over the Muslim community. Uh, and yet this, such an individual was not a prophet and uh, would not, no longer be able to receive direct revelations the way the prophet did. Uh, so the the nabos that was given to such a person, uh, the the commander of the believers, or Amir al-Mu'minin, uh, commander of the faithful, you may have seen that. The, uh, the, the descriptive name to this individual was called Khalifa, which means the representative or the successor uh, of of the Prophet. So the full description was Khalifa to Rasulullah, which means the successor, the Prophet of God in his capacity as a ruler. That's what the, the word actually means. But the term Islamic State uh, is something which is on the minds of many, many Muslims. What has happened in the last century after the end of the Ottoman Empire and the Mughal Empire in, in India uh, with the rise of nation states, uh, the the discourse began then, uh, around that time, the uh, to, through the, the the late 19th century through the 20th century, on how to define a state. And at that time, the when the caliphate came to an end, uh, nation states uh, began to develop and be born that had an ethnic uh, definition to it. And it was at that time that the concept of an Islamic state, as well as a Jewish state for that matter, uh, began to be bandied about. And uh, we noticed that the first such nation states that were born were the states of, uh, of Pakistan as an Islamic state and Israel as a Jewish state, pretty much simultaneously. But the, uh, those definitions were primarily demographic definitions. And in both cases, when Israel and, and uh, Pakistan was born, there was a massive change of, uh, of populations to ensure that the population of Pakistan was, you know, majority uh, Muslim. These ideas are novel and are very new to our history, and not no, not at all part of the of the juridical or juristic or theological tradition of Islam. Uh, but the emotion and passion regarding Islamic State uh, really evolves around the the desire by many Muslims in many countries to have a country where there's a sense of um, um, of justice. Uh, in America, when we feel wronged, we say this is unconstitutional. And when um, when Muslims feel something is wrong, they say this is un-Islamic. And this is what prompts them as a response and as a reaction to that, the desire to establish an Islamic state. The man who has been proclaimed recently as caliph, uh, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. So is there any sense in which he can, can claim legitimacy as caliph and will it achieve what you're outlining, um, uh, you know, a, a state with justice or, or with a, um, that's underpinned by an Islamic vision? Uh, it, it is very unlikely for, for several reasons. First of all, the, the political realities on the ground are such <clears throat> that uh, very few countries and very few people will acknowledge him as such, as a leader. Besides, under uh, classical Islamic doctrine, any any ruler has to have what's called the bay'ah, which is the buy-in of the people. Uh, and modern Muslim scholars have, uh, have recognized or have even uh, stated that uh, modern uh, principles of, uh, of elections, of popular uh, democratic elections, are uh, a means by which the buy-in or the buy-out of the people can be determined and, 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 uh, and measured. So, um, uh, you know, without doing that, it is uh, very difficult for us to believe that he will be accepted by the vast, uh, you know, by, by, by any reasonable number of people uh, in the Muslim world. In your view... Does it serve any purpose to bring back the office of caliph or does some new structure of, of authority or new structure of state that incorporates a Muslim view uh, need to be developed? Well, I mean, this, this notion of caliphate doesn't mean anything more than, this, uh, than the political ruler uh, of, the, uh, of the nation. Uh, this just happened in nomenclature. It's like saying the emperor or the king. 
Um, you know, we have uh, we have kings today. We don't call them emperors anymore. Uh, but uh, the the concept of uh, of, of modern statehood uh, is such that any ruler ruler today uh, it really exists or rules in in a in a modern nation state defined as such. Uh, but given the emotions, the strong emotions among many Muslims, which is why you have Islamic political parties in almost every country from a Muslim majority country. That is, from uh, Morocco to, to Indonesia, you have Islamic political parties whose uh, ambition is to erect an Islamic state. There is a, there's a strong emotion among Muslims to establish that. And, and, and this is why I convened a group of scholars uh, back in, starting in 2006 to discuss this idea, what, what does an Islamic state mean in the modern day? And, and they, uh, in a way that would maintain the continuity of Islamic theological thought and Islamic legal thought on this very issue. Uh, and they made it clear that under Islamic law, Islamic theology, the primary, uh, the primary role of government is to be just. Uh, in fact, in today we talk about government, we talk about disembodied, uh, non-ontologically real entities, the state. Uh, in olden times, the concept of a state was something that was incoherent. People always thought in terms of an ontologically real being, of God, the prophet, uh, the king, the ruler, the emperor, uh, the pharaoh, whoever it was. But it was an individual who ruled over individuals or groups of individuals. Whether it was Caesar, whether it was the Ottoman caliphs, or it was the king, it was always a, an individual who ruled over others. And therefore, the, 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 um, the, the question was, who is the ruler? Or what are the traits of the ruler that Muslims should give their bayah to? Uh, there were three traits that were determined as being uh, positive or important. Number one, that he had to be just, he had to be pious, he had to be wise, uh, ideally. But then they ask the questions, what happens if he is any combination of these? What happens if he is maybe biased, uh, but not just and, and not wise? They, they determined that as long as he were just, even if he was lacking in piety, if he was lacking in wisdom, as long as his rule uh, effected justice throughout the realm, then the Muslims were obliged to give him the bayat and to accept him as their ruler. So the real issue is, is justice, and uh, our scholars in our project, which, by the way, we have a book which is um, going to be published uh, around the beginning of 2015 by Palgrave Macmillan, in which we outline this jurisprudence that these scholars put together. Uh, and, um, uh, and we talk and, and define this to, to, with the intention of then creating measures by which we can measure what we might call the Islamicity of the state, which is really the justice of the state. And our group of scholars then uh, unpack justice into both the uh, justice in the courts, uh, as well as political justice, economic justice, and social justice. Can you explain how the vision of extremist groups like ISIS in setting up their version of an Islamic state goes against the spirit of Islam and uh, a, a, a the positive historic norms of Islamic governance? Well, uh, I, I've already addressed part of that. The, 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 uh, 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 this, what's very clear is that an Islamic state has to be just and that the ruler has to have the, the, the buy-in, the bay'ah. The, in other words, like a, an, uh, in traditional times, it was done in different societies done differently. The Arabia of the time of the Prophet was a tribal society. Uh, the, the sheikh of the tribe would be the leader of the tribe who was kind of like the chief of, a, of a, uh, an American Indian tribe uh, who was accepted, who was like a godfather figure. And the, these, uh, these tribes among themselves would then have a, a council and they would elect one among themselves to be their, 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 their ruler. Uh, this was one system. But as long as there was some method, some mechanism, by which the, the will of the people was measured, 
This is a fundamental part. It's called bayah, the acceptance of the ruler by the rule. Because according to Islamic law, classics from a from thousand years ago more, uh, the, 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 the relationship between the, the ruler and the ruled is like a contract. It's a contract which the, which the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the ruled uh, agree to with the ruler. And the ruler has to abide by these principles of justice and by God's laws uh, and to be both just and to be compassionate and to be merciful to his people, just like a father is to his children. Right. And, 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 and these processes were not at all. Nobody can just come in by force and, and claim by force that he is, uh, uh, you know, a caliph. In fact, in the... Uh, and this is not something which Muslim doctrine accepts. I take it in your view from from what we've seen of what is happening in the ISIS territory. <laughs> is justice ruling? Uh, well, obviously not. Uh, but but let's take a look a case where maybe the, let's look at Egypt, for example, where the, the issue of legitimacy. I mean, this is a this is a very this a, Egypt represents a much more. Uh, better example of this question which, which the jurists discussed in our uh, in our sessions several years ago the question was if somebody came and took power by force um, would he be is he considered legitimate now some said no that would not be considered legitimate well others said if he has the acceptance of the people if the people accept him as as ruler and he rules justly then it is Islamically okay, if I can use that expression, Islamically okay.